I want the best and the brightest Japanese talent with superb technology and high motivation to dive themselves into Silicon Valley. We have too many middle-sized companies and SMEs which cannot break out of local markets despite having world-class technological capacity that we can boast to the world. Out of such companies, we will select 200 companies in the next five years to send to Silicon Valley. Stanford University, the US Japan Council and others will extend support but these Japanese companies will experience intense competition against the uh, first-class designers and uh, investors and make the challenge to be reborn as entirely new companies. Like I pointed out earlier, all right, just in case you just tuned in, I want to share this first. This is part two of Giga School concept, and it's it's important because you want to know something? Now we're going to tie in the whole thing of Sony big time, right? Not just talk about it and so on. So again, you're always welcome to go back to that previous video to catch yourself up on it. And I would highly suggest that you do that. Let's jump back to what we have. So Sony, like it says, May 11, 2023, develops blockchain system for digital rights management. Now you may be wondering about some of these things, right? Like, you know, Digital rights management. Well, I'm an A-star guy and I just tuned into your show. It's A-star all the way. Boom. Pound my chest. Like Kong. I'm going to basically say it's A-star all the way. And normally I would be, I could understand where people are coming from with the whole A-star claims because consistently Sony has chosen A-star for a few key things, right? But this time around, what about in regards to like education? So were you aware that there's three divisions of Sony Corporation? For one, the music industry. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Sony Global Education. You know where we're going with this. And it says that, basically speaking, there's also, of course, Sony Corporation. So those are the three. Uh, they have revealed that they have developed a rights management system for digital content, which utilizes what? Blockchain tech. And, of course, we cover blockchain. We cover DLT. What is this? So Sony, last April, uh, applied for a patent, okay? And in regards to DRM, DRM is not necessarily like a brand new thing, but I'm going to get into some of the key things that you should pay attention to. So for one, digital rights management is a form of a copyright protection for what? Digital media. Um, it goes on to mention, basically, that this aims to prevent illegal redistribution of digital media and restrict ways of copying excuse me copying purchase digital content there's a few ways in which the traditional drm uh, mainly regarding the complexity of copying and the lack of um, transparency is involved like there's issues with that but due to each of individual recording with their own data themselves um, they basically have this way of fixing all of the problems or the criticisms if you will and they do that through blockchain. So is this really truly Sony blockchain? And if so, is this a connection with Jasmine or is there a connection to A-Star? Again, guys, like I said, we're going to get into all that. So what I want to show you here is this right here. I'm going to jump down to it, okay? And basically speaking, I like this part. Blockchain refers to a digital ledger, which is, you know, the data is recorded chronologically but not publicly. We understand the concepts of, you know, the want and need for all this. But Sony is basing their new DRM system, if you weren't aware, on a blockchain-based system they previously produced all the way back in December of 2022 in a collaboration with who? IBM. Now, this part is definitely where I'm going to go with all this. Now, I want to state this. If you are thinking that, you know, well, this is, uh, a star, the answer is no. A star is not, you know, built on hyperledger fabric. IBM has that plug with hyperledger. Jasmine uses hyperledger, right? Um, Casper, we just did a video earlier today, right? Hopefully, you guys saw it. If you didn't, it's fine, but you know, Casper is going to be doing some big things, especially when it comes to finance. By the way, Jasmine also entered into what finance democracy. So, I pay attention to all these common 
you know, I hate to use this term, but denominators, if you will, because I think it's very unique how you have different blockchains with similar use cases, but they have this general consensus of using IBM related technology, but if anything, Hyperledger, right? You know, we look at Casper with what they're doing in regards to, you know, uh, finance, right? It's, it's absolutely going to be huge when it comes to Casper. And again, that video, you know, I get complaints about my videos being too long. That one's only about 10 and a half minutes. I would highly encourage you to watch it because it gives you a broader idea of where this can go. And especially when it comes to Jasmine breaking into this new industry for them, when it comes to finance democracy, we know where they stand out when it comes to data democracy. So they're killing it lately with some of the news, the expansions, all this stuff. But this topic of the day this part two in regards to education why should it matter to you and if anything do we have something solid in regards to sony choosing jasmine i think we do and let's again get more into this so <clears throat> this system stored educational information degrees diplomas tests and more thanks to the technology of blockchain it was possible to allow approved users to access exchange access and exchange these records by centralizing data from multiple ed educational institutions into one global ledger. Now, excuse me, been talking all day and sometimes this is what happens. But I wanna state this, when we did the whole giga coverage, giga concept for Japan, then at towards the end, we gave you that outline of you know, for instance, does the U.S. have anything to do with this? Yes. We tied the whole thing with data free flow with trust. That was a big deal. You saw Kazuma Sato referenced. He also showed you some, uh, maybe not necessarily on that video, but other examples in regards to Sato and his patents, tying it all in. But if anything, Jasmine stands out when it comes to education in the metaverse, but on what platform, right? Well, not just the platform, but what specific thing in the metaverse? education so when i see things referenced here about the diplomas the degrees the tests and so on and i see all this talk about sony i got really interested in this and i thought i would bring it to you guys so this whole thing being possible to allow approved users to access and exchange these records by centralizing data from multiple educational institutions into an online global ledger that's the bottom line which one will you know be the chosen one for that is the thing now i know some people might see the whole concept of centralizing data they think well isn't jasmine decentralizing that you got to keep in mind they still will get some of that from a centralized entity and if anything decentralize it through their own um system or in some cases for instance like a, a decentralized data marketplace right even from an educational point of view Sony's new blockchain-based DRM system builds upon this. According to the website, the system's purpose is to manage the copyright information of online works. Now, information, data, like who is the one when you think about it, right, that is going to get the job done when it comes to personal data management? Yeah, I'm going to pick Jasmine on this one. So for one, IBM. Number two, Hyperledger. Now, when we compare some of this stuff, right, and I'll jump to this. <clears throat> Nowhere do you have in regards to A-Star this being mentioned. So for number one, if we're going to do a comparison, and let me just double check my settings real quick. When it comes to A-Star, A-Star, if you weren't aware of it, and I'm not knocking A-Star, I think it's solid. I wouldn't mind getting some tokens in regards to A-Star. -A I think it's a really good project. A star network is multi-chain. They also dis, you know, decentralized and they also have an application layer, but it's a layer zero. It's done through Polkadot. Um, yes, A star also incorporates, you know, an EVM through e Ethereum. So there's that comparison, but A star does not use Hyperledger. All right. Getting more into this. A star network is divided into two layers. Uh, this is just on my own notes. If you're where, where I'm going with this. Uh, the first layer basically is called the base layer. Um, the first layer of blockchain course building uh, is used building on the substrate blockchain framework. The second layer is extended 
in the solution creating using the optimistic virtual machine OVM invented by the Plasma Group. So it's, again, totally different technologies and so on. Um, if you're wondering about DRM, right, that's digital rights uh, management. And basically the focus of that is to use technology to control access to copyrighted material. Now, in regards to this copyrighted material, when we talk about a blockchain that's going to need to definitely protect the rights of not just artists and so on, independent entities and so on. What about one that, again, is focused on just that data democracy, but, you know, that personalized data, right? The digital rights on that. So if it's literally called DRM, digital rights management, and you have Jasmine with, you know, personal data management, I mean, I could put the two and two together, right? Now, getting more into this outline of what we have, <clears throat> I want to share this with you. Sony's new blockchain-based DRM system builds, of course, on this, according to the website, the system's purpose is to manage, manage the copyright information of online works. Here's the quote with features for demonstrating the date, the time that electronic data was created, leveraging the properties of blockchains to record verifiable information in a difficult to falsify way and identifying previously recorded works, allowing participants to share, verify when a piece of electronic data was created and by whom. Now, as we saw yesterday, I think we reported on this yesterday, we are talking about Jasmine's new blockchain. And one of the things that was also mentioned was some of the you know key two partners that they partnered up with um, for finance democracy, but it specifically mentioned uh, some of that leveraging right so again i'm trying to connect all this and have a broader sense of where this is going um i want to show you guys this as well <clears throat> basically says this system would be able to do this for a wide range oh excuse me a wide array of digital content such as music films vr content ebooks now i also understand that when it comes to jasmine the internet of things and personal data management you know it's not like a one trick type pony thing right they have multiple layers of utility um, in getting more into not just the whole focus of data management, you got to keep in mind Sony's adoption of blockchain, like it says, is not the first of its kind. I mean, obviously they do have the thing with a star, but again, what about personal data management? That is an a star earlier this year, the Ethereum Alliance enterprise announced it was teaming up with, and again, I'm going to point this out all the time, Hyperledger. All right. So we showed you guys on yesterday's show. Uh, the whole thing with quant interoperability, the Hyperledger update. But like it says, in order to promote the adoption of blockchain by business, we also know that those two key new partners for Jasmine is all focused on that promotion of adoption. Again, it's literally almost worded the same. Now, I think that's more than a coincidence, and I'm not saying this is speculative anymore. I'm going to show you some key things that why I feel as though it's not. But it says this encouraged media titan Forbes and mobile developer Black uh, BlackBerry to use blockchain in their services. Their main goals, respectively, were to improve security and ease of sharing to their online platforms. Sony's development of a blockchain-based system signals another step in the path of the implementation of blockchain tech in our everyday lives. Yes, our everyday lives also trying to get to the whole point of Society 5.0 and so on. Be it online transactions for forming copyrights, blockchain will add greater ease security to what we do and produce online. Now, check this out. I'm going to jump over to uh, what we have in regards to Sony. And I want to show you this right here. There it is. And basically speaking, I blew this up as much as I could. But this right here was... Um, a while back, but not to the point where it is a nothing burger, because it's definitely not. So this is the old press release, but check this out for yourself. Sony develops rights management system, of course, for digital content utilizing blockchain. Um, what you also see here is it, sets, it states, ideal for what? Educational materials and other forms of digital content. 
Yes, you can see where I'm going with this, especially with that Giga School concept. Now, as I got more into this, all right, it mentions some key things here as well. But basically speaking, now we're talking about that management system, right? Especially when it comes to Jasmine. Well, look at what it mentions here. This management system for digital content that utilizes blockchain tech, this new system is based on Sony and Sony Global Education's previously developed system for authenticating, sharing, and rights management for educational data. Additionally, features functionality for processing rights-related information. So for one, we were tying in what we had with Giga School concept. We're also tying in what we shared previously in regards to what Kazumasa Sato reference in regards to the interview that he had but if anything we can even include some of these other stuff that we're talking about in regards to like music etc etc i don't need to read this part about what blockchains create we understand that right um but what i do want to point out is this right here um this basically is going to advance the tech for digital content creation it's going to allow anyone to broadcast and share content but the rights management of the content is still carried out conventionally by industry organizations or the creators themselves. That's to say, Nessus, excuse me, Nessus, I can't even pronounce that tonight. I've been talking too much. Necessitating, there we go. A more efficient way of managing and demonstrating ownership of copyright related information for works. Now, I also want to state this. I myself have personally invested into audio, right? The tokenization of like you know independent artists and independent record labels and stuff like that right it's a good thing but when it comes to the digital rights themselves and what sony has going on you better believe that they want to choose a specific blockchain standard when it comes to that personal uh, data management if you will Again, for the people that are saying it's A-Star, you're not understanding the, the utility layer for A-Star compared to Jasmine, right? That's why you reference Hyperledger over and over and the whole IBM thing. How about this? This newly developed system is specialized for managing rights-related info of written works with features of demonstrating the date and time that electronic data was created. Again, leveraging the properties. We mentioned this, right? Um goes on to also mention though that in addition to the creation of electronic data booting up the system will automatically verify the rights generation of a piece of written works which was conventionally proven difficult furthermore the system lends itself to the rights management of various types of digital content including electronic textbooks and other educational content again why did i point that out because on the previous deep dive for Google School Concept, all of this was referenced. But we now have, of course, music and films that we can add to this. Um, going to go further down, you know, like it says, Sony is contemplating possible uses in a wide range of fields. Um, Sony Global Education is continuously carrying out technological development and prototyping towards the use of blockchain tech. Prototyping towards. What did we see when it comes to Sato and some of his recent patents and so on? Yes, you better believe in that interview, it references, again, some of these key things in regards to education. So is that a nothing burger? I don't think so. When we get more into this, um, yeah, the use of blockchain tech in the educational field. This is a big deal to Sony, but if anything, it's a big deal to Kazuma Sato. And last I checked, right? He was a former Sony executive and he's continuously all the time working on new patents. And he was even specifically interviewed about the whole key thing in regards to education. So again, guys, is this a nothing burger? No way. I truly believe Sony is choosing Jasmine for its educational plug. Okay. The writing is literally on the wall. Hyperleisure Fabric, some of the other things we mentioned, some of the other things we shared. Uh, Sora Mesu was a very, very big deal. Still is a very big deal. You know, we talk about the whole quant connection. Again, Sora Mitsu, former Sony executive, just like Sony, or just like Jasmine, but what they contribute also to Society 5.0, 
but also the whole thing with the quant plug with interoperability through what? What standard? We're always talking about standards. ISO TC307. And again, what is that connected to? Who created that standard? Gilbert Verdian, 2015, the inception. And then it came to life in 2016. I'm not going to ever dismiss that. So this other content that was used in the field of education, Sony Global Education, basically speaking, um, is, and I, I have this, I have to go back and forth on this on left to right because I want nice and big for you guys to see it. It's considering as possible commercialization as a service. So when we talk about Jasmine, we're always talking about, you know, SAS, right? Software as a service. What about commercializing some of this, all right? That's a big deal. Sony in itself is obviously a very big deal. And they have a specific um, area that has focus, right? Not just Sony Entertainment. This is a whole branch, a whole wing of what they got going on, especially in Japan. Literally called, and you saw it, Sony, what? Global Education. That's a real thing. So my thing is this. They recognize already um jasmine obviously you know former sony executives you think they just all of a sudden just like oh i forgot these guys work for us no not at all there is so many projects i shouldn't say so many projects so many of these guys who get together and again i as promised i am going to show you guys that club that kunitaki ando is part of where he gets with former sony executives and they talk about their experiences it's all in japanese but i want to get some real key ones um in regards to sorry there's this guy revving up his engine outside um in regards to sora mitsu um and also of course with you know these guys from jasmine again two different areas but they both worked for sony all right before we kick it over to this next thing i want to show you this sony group is also considering innovative ways and this is the key thing for you guys innovative ways to make use of blockchain tech for information management and data distribution in a host of different fields. Think about this, guys. Who's being innovative as we speak? Who is ahead of schedule as we speak when it comes to uh, these key concepts of the AI engine? Uh, Jasmine having his new his own blockchain, like I mentioned earlier, yesterday's show. Jasmine, in my opinion, I didn't think they're going to come up with that information until the end of the year. So in my opinion, we are ahead of schedule in that regards. But innovation, Sony Group, considering this, yeah, you better believe that they recognize Jasmine from top to bottom um, because of, you know, obviously the management and data distribution in a host of different fields uh, through the technological development and commercialization of what blockchains, including this new system. Sony will continue exploring the possibilities that blockchain tech holds for Sony Group diverse and wide ranging business domains. So at the end of the day, my thing is this, we showed you again, the whole concept of hyper ledger fabric and tying that all in and so on. And if anything, why would I do that? All right, that's the bottom line. So I know that seems like we're closing that right out on that, but this is from last February, and it's a little reiteration of what we just mentioned to a sense. But like it says here, and I'll blow this one up just a tad bit more before we jump into the next thing of what we have. The Sony digital rights management debacle, the litigation, the settlement, and some thoughts on the future of DRM, like I was talking about earlier. The key things to recognize from here is literally what Jasmine is all about, security, privacy, consumer protection or, you know, you as a person that just, you know, for instance, freely throw away your data to centralized entities, right? I, I'm guilty of it too, right? Google, Amazon, so on. The key thing though is securitizing all that, privatizing all that, if anything, monetizing that, but giving you a choice to do so. Um, Sony BMG compact disc outraged consumers back in the day, prompted less than 20 separate lawsuits. Um, it says that, the, for instance, the, although there's a recent settlement that had begun the process of addressing those issues, the debacle has been called to attention, uh, both in the legal and practical risk of DRM software for content providers as well as consumers. Again, 
addressing, I guess you could say, the elephant in the room is in regards to protecting um, the, the copyrighted, you know, the copyrights of uh, music creators or artists and so on. Again, what will they be picking to protect that entity, that data, if you will? Um, it goes on to mention some of this right here. Sony ran afoul of this framework in the past. Uh, the settlement and the future of DRM. Is it possible to design DRM that does not limit fair use? Um, is it possible to create security risks or invade music fans' privacy? Again, think about it. If we're talking about data democratization in, um, excuse me, and Sony is literally looking around and saying to themselves, all right, who is the one that has started in, in you know, entering into Japan? Last I checked, Jasmine is the first, hence why they're called the Bitcoin in Japan. I know that doesn't make sense, guys. I'm so with you on that statement. But regulatory compliant with JVCEA from the beginning, when it was formerly called FSA, you know, they have more than met the standard of standards, if you think about it. The plug with Genki Yoda, SBI Japan, Bitpoint, all that. Great stuff. So my thing is this. They're well connected from top to bottom. Former, you know, Sony executives, obviously working with other former Sony executives with Sora Mitsu. Then you got this whole thing of where Sony's currently at. Literally making it public, and I'm showing this to you. I showed this to you guys tonight, making it public that they're looking into all these different blockchain solutions because basically speaking, they recognize this security, privacy, and consumer protection. So who is the plug? Who is the connect? And if anything, in closing, who is going to be the one that is going to get it all done? You have to have something innovative. You have to have something that's going to scale. We know that Jasmine already scales, but now we're going to, uh, from, you know, not just where we were with centrality with 1000 TPS, but we're also going to another layer two solution with what we presented yesterday. Again, check it out. And on top of that, where we could possibly go in, going to in the future in regards to quant network with interoperability, the hyperledger update, and so on. That deal that they have, or that thing they got going on, for instance, um, tying in, you know, Sora Mitsu, I do truly believe that is such a big deal because, again, guys, like I mentioned, ISO TC307, the quant standard. I don't just do these videos for no reason. All right. So that's basically it. Um, you can look more into this if you want. That was, again, from February 28th. But the point is education, right? Where does Jasmine stand in regards to education, the metaverse and all that? And again, just real quick, yesterday's show, we pointed out that when it comes to the metaverse, because we knew that Jasmine at some point was going to enter the metaverse, it's not that Jasmine is trying to create their own metaverse. you got to understand their partners that have, you know, metaverse platforms. Jasmine's connection or where jasmine stands in regards to the metaverse is definitely from the educational side and like we also pointed out when it comes to giga school concept two-thirds of that budget okay when it comes to the educational side of things in japan two-thirds of the educational budget goes to laptops and pcs okay so if two-thirds of that budget goes to that, that's why Giga School Concept is a huge, like I said in the thumbnail, opportunity for Jasmine because it simply is. The educational market is a big deal. Why would Sony uh, get involved in something like this, right? Why would they make a whole division in regards to all this if it wasn't that big of a deal? Jasmine, in my opinion, is seizing the opportunity from beginning to end. I know some people don't see it that way. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not financial advice or anything like that. I just present what I see. I connect the dots for you guys and so on. But I am literally seeing the writing on the wall. I'm telling myself this is a big deal because when we talk about utility in motion, you are hitting so many different sectors. You know, earlier somebody was mentioning, you know, ISO 222, IOTA, right? We know what IOTA is going to, it's going to be massive in regards to especially like data and so on. But at the same time, I'm recognizing Jasmine when it comes to the concepts of data, especially, you know, data democratization. 
But I love the idea that they're like spreading their wings, if you will. They're not just in that one industry. Finance democracy is a big deal in itself. We talk about cross-border payments for Ripple's XRP, Stellar, and so on. Let's face it. When it comes to Jasmine, it doesn't sound so popular compared to like the, the you know, uh, these big ballers that are in the top, you know, 25 and so on. Stellar, uh, especially XRP, what is it ranked? You know, fourth, fifth consistently lately. Those are the ones that stand out. So they're hitting a lot of different utility layers. And when we look at the price, 0 0.003 some odd number, I'm literally saying to myself, my God, you know, we have so much momentum at 0 0.008. We we're literally going to get to the point where we're probably re we're going to get to over a penny at some point. Um, but the whole thing that happened with Binance, um, Binance Japan, you know, Binance US, we lost that momentum. And of course, there's a lot of things that happened in regards to the bear market, so on and so forth. But again, understand this last thing. I keep saying this. XDC, I'm going to throw this out there real quick. XDC since last year right was consistently building in a bear market crypto winter and so on and a lot of times there was not much being mentioned remember that time period that we went through with jasmine where it didn't seem like a lot was being mentioned like they would go they would go obviously to um you know like a blockchain conference and promote jasmine um but they went to some key ones right ivs crypto 2023 Diamond sponsored by Ripple. And again, I'll re-remind re people, Jasmine and Ripple are not partners, but they are partnered with a key, you know, partner, if you will, and that is the CARE project, right, through healthcare and so on. So you got to keep in mind that all these things are significant. We're talking about, you know, data in regards to not just, you know, what you see reported here lately, but, you know, we can even talk about medical data. But all these things are contributing to this big, giant goal of Society 5.0. That is the bottom line. And I'm just going to go ahead and state it. Whether people feel the same or not. And that is, I think, honestly, Jasmine is the chosen one for Sony, especially when it comes to education. Every single time I've gone back to this, again, guys, the writing is on the wall. I'll stop harping on it. Do more of your own research for yourself if you don't believe it. Um, yes, A star stands out for Sony as well, right? Don't get me wrong. Different utility layer, totally different type of thing going on in regards to that. But education, that is worth a lot of money, and especially when it comes to Japan.